All right, here's a nice simple one. I've got a 120 kilometer radius asteroid. So let me draw a little asteroid over here. All right. Um, and it has a surface acceleration of gravity of um, 1.5 meters per second squared. And I want to know what its escape speed is. So if I had an object and I w it was moving at some speed v, what would get it um, all the way up here to infinity, right? So to escape, when we, we say that the escape speed is the speed required to get your um, to get an object up an infinite distance away from your object. Right. So let's see. What do I know about this thing? Um, that was my representation over there. Um, so I'm given an asteroid. And all I know about it is, uh, one, it's radius. I'll call that big R equals, ooh, what did I call that? Mm, 120 kilometers. And uh, surface gravity. I'll call that G. It's 1.5 meters per second squared. Okay, um, and that's all I really know. I just and with that, I should be able to find the escape speed. Simple enough. We're not we're not looking for anything amazing here. Um, so the concept here is the gravitational potential energy. Um, let's see. I know in your book they have a whole section on the escape speed, but to be honest, it's more important that you know how to play with the gravitational potential energy than it is for you to know the equation for the escape speed. You should be able to figure out the equation for the escape speed on your own. I mean, it's not one of these things that's really um, complicated. Uh, on the other hand, something like the gravitational potential energy is fundamental. So you should know that no matter what, all right? So this U equals minus GMM over R, this you should know. You should always know it. You should know it like you were born knowing it. So you want an answer, right? Um, first, what I want to do here is I want to reformulate the GPE. So I want to reformulate formulate um, the gravitational potential energy because um, right here it's in terms of all this stuff that I don't know right so I want to get it in terms of this surface gravity so the surface gravity comes from the force right so we said uh, G is equal to F over M right and F was G M M over R squared, and then we had that M here. So G is GM over R squared, right? Let's make that a big R because this is at the surface and the surface is at this radius. All right. So if we're going to reformulate this gravitational potential energy, we want to stick this in, in, this, um, in this equation. So we have U is equal to minus GMM over big R now because we're right here at the um, at the radius. That's the only place we're doing this for, right? That's equal to minus G, um, yep, minus little m, excuse me. Then I have my G big M over big R squared. And to get that R squared out of this thing, I need to put another R out here, right? So that's minus M G R. So that's what I'm going to use, all right, in my conservation of energy. So I want to conserve my energy. The whole point of this is that I have this six escape speed and I don't have to add any more energy to my system. I am 
going to be able to get infinitely far away from this asteroid. So, conserving the energy. Um, so that's my initial energy, which is equal to my initial kinetic energy plus my initial potential energy. Uh, that's equal to one half m my escape speed because you know this is part of the cons conservation thing plus the potential energy which is minus mgr right um, and that's equal to my final energy which is equal to k final which is just the minimum to get to infinity since we have the minimum energy to get to infinity k final is zero we're just barely getting to infinity and at infinity there's no nothing there's no um, speed and then we have my u final which is equal to the limit as um, r approaches infinity of minus gmm over r and that limit is zero okay so so that that's all I need to do for my um, conservation law is figure out this. So this thing is equal to zero. We're good, right? Uh, we can use that to um, solve for v. All right. So if I solve for my escape speed, that means I have my v escape on one side squared we'll continue with the square for now um i cancel out these m's actually let's get rid of that because we've seen this all before uh, we have two times g times r so we have the square root of two times g times r okay so that's a nice simple thing right so then we have my square root of two i have 1.5 right meters per second squared here and I have my 120 kilometers, that's 120 kilometers, which is equal to um, something else, right? So we've got the square root of 2 times 1.5 is 3, 3 times that is 360, 0, 0, 0, 0 meters squared per second squared. Okay, so this is like 36 times 10,000, which is like, and that's like saying 6 squared times 100 squared. So that, I'm going to say that that means I have 600 here meters per second. Bam. That's all you need, right? That's, that's the speed. So, does this make any sense? Well, meters, meters squared, squared, squared so the units for the speed are in um, meters per second squared, meters per second, excuse me, uh, as uh, required. So that's good, okay? Remember, you can only do that, so you can only use the units to check as long as you keep your units the whole way through. You start dropping your units, then you somewhere just have to make assumptions, and you could make assumptions uh, that are wrong, right? So you've done something wrong and you don't know it because you made some assumptions. Um, and you want, to, you want to know when you do something wrong so you can correct it right away. Uh, let's see, the speed of this thing uh, is uh, less than the escape speed of, uh, oh, I don't know how to, how to pronounce a series. I'm gonna call it series. So Ceres, according to um, according to the book that I was using when I was doing this problem, is the most massive asteroid in the solar system, which is good. I mean. We want that speed to be less than the speed of the most, the most massive thing in the um, solar system. If it was, it was, if it was greater, then we'd have some cognitive dissonance going on. We'd, there'd be something wrong, and there isn't anything wrong. This all looks good. Uh, you're happy. I'm happy. Everybody's happy. 
because this looks like it's a reasonably good problem. So remember, I don't really care if you know the um, equation for the escape speed. Um, I probably won't have anything with the escape speed on the test. I very well may have something that has to do with the potential energy. I have in the past um, had some complicated problems with the potential energy itself. That's the important thing here. Um, the escape speed is just an interesting quantity that we can find for for a different uh, for different um, for different celestial objects. So that's one way to play with the gravitational potential energy. You've got to use it with our energy conservation um, at an infinite distance from the source. It, that gravitational potential energy is zero. Okay, that's very important which is exactly the opposite of what would happen if you used the um, formulation for being close to the Earth, right? If you were using the formulation close to the Earth, it would actually go to infinity. But obviously that, that approximation is only good in a very small region. Uh, this is this um, formula here. It's always good, right? It's always good. So when in doubt, go with this guy, not the other one. Uh, had a very interesting um, problem in thermal physics when I was an undergraduate that required you to remember that. So, I hope you have a good um, good time. I hope you really like this. I like this. Well, I was enjoying it about as much as I was. I've enjoyed it about as much as I can as any time that I'm talking after 11 o'clock at night. But um, you know, I know, and you know that I know that you know that you and I are going to have a great time on Friday, so I'll see you then. Bye now.